morning. We are so happy that you join us here at Grace International Baptist Church as we are going to be looking into God's word this morning. And then also we would like to thank you for joining us as we uh, learn more of God's word today. Today we are going to be looking at you have to believe it to see it. You have to believe it to see it. But before we go into God's word, let's pray and then we will come back to this. Father, we are giving you so much praise this morning for all that you have done for us. We give you praise, Lord, for you being who you are. We give you praise for you being a God that is always there for us. And this morning, Lord, as we are going to be looking into your word, we would like to ask you to take your word and minister to our hearts. Speak to us, teach us, and help us to practice the things that we learned from the word today. And Father, this morning, we also would like to lift our voices and our hearts and our hands up to the eye in the sky and say, thank you, Father, for the past week, for all that you have done for us, for your protection, your healing, your, your provision. You're looking out for us. You being there for us. Your love shared. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And now, Lord, we pray that you will continue to do that for us this week. We are looking to you to energize us, to strengthen us, and to be with us as we face this new week. We don't know what is lying ahead, but you do. And so we ask you to do just that. Thank you again and we love In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. You have to believe it to see it. Okay, but well, this morning we are going to read from James chapter 1 and we are going to read from verse 2 to 8. James chapter number 1 and we are going to read from verse 2 to 8. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and, and read it from the Bible. If not, you can follow us on the screen. And it reads as this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Wow. You have to believe it to see it. In 1961, the Soviet Union sent the first um, cosmonaut into space. When the cosmonaut returned to Earth, the Soviet leader Nikita um, Khrushchev declared they have been to space and didn't see any God there. About 10 months later, the U.S. Saint John Glenn, a, protect, a Protestant uh, Presbyterian who took his faith and religion very seriously into space. He circled the earth three times and his Mercury mission came back down and told the world, I saw God everywhere. I saw his glory in the galaxy I saw his splendor in the universe, and I saw his majesty in the stars. Maybe someone may ask, 
Which one was Hermes? To be able to see God when we go up there? Well, John chapter 3 and verse 3 tells us, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, before there's a before there's a spiritual transformation in your life, you are too narrow-minded to see the possibility of what God wants to do in your life. But when till you give your life over to God, that's when you are able to see him. Werner Van Brons, the leading scientist in the early stages of the United States space program, said there has never been any great accomplishment in history without faith. Without faith. A lot of people say, I believe it when I see it. God says the exact opposite. You will see it when you first believe it. Many things in life have to be believed before they can be seen. But how will you see what's happening in your life through the eyes of faith? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 tells us, faith is confidence in what we, um, we hope for, we believe, and assurance about what we do not see. So you have to believe it to see it. Faith is visualizing the future. It is um, it's believing um, before you see it. It's faith that causes the scientists to believe that we can put a man on the moon. It's faith that causes the architect to design a building because First, they believe it, that it can be done. Faith is that causes an Olympic athlete to practice and go to the Olympic trials because they believe they can achieve it. And it is faith that causes a sculptor or an artist to believe that they can paint a picture or attempt the sculpture. Someone has to believe it before they can see it. You can trust God's promises and his work in your life. Believe in God's love. Believe in God's care and guidance as you face whatever he has given you today. Believe it and you will see it. You have to believe it to see it. We got to dream big because we have a big God. Because the, the size of our God determines the size of our dream. Today we wanted to see three things. The first one, faith requires imagination. You see, for us to be able to see, believe it, to see it, we got to have an imagination. Faith requires imagination. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 say, We fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen, for the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. When you can't see something physically, you have to imagine it in your mind. That's why imagination is essential to living by faith. We already read in um, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 that says, Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Because faith is when we hope for something and we know it's going to happen. To hope for something. You have to picture it in your mind. To put your faith in something, you have to be able to picture it. Hebrews 11 is called God's Hall of Fame. When you read through the names, you realize that every one of them became 
heroes of faith because they use their imagination first. For example, God said to Abraham, you're 90 years old and you have no children, but I'm going to change your name from Abraham to Abraham, which means father of a great nation. He wants Abraham to go outside at night and count the stars in the sky. Of course, that is not possible. That's how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren you would have, Abraham, in, in your family tree. That is the nation of Abraham. Listen, God was just showing Abraham, believe it, and you will see it. What was God doing when he told Abraham to go count the stars? He was activating his imagination. It's like he was saying, I want you to visualize what I am going to do in your life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 18 to fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Look, you can't see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they are going to last for eternity. You can't see your own soul, but it's going to last for eternity. The Bible says you need to focus on things that will last, the things you can't see with your eyes. So how do we focus on things we can't see? We need to use our imagination. Imagination is more than just creating creativity and fun. It is God's gift to you because he knows you will need it to be able to live by faith. So not only faith requires imagination, but then we also will see number two, doubt is the enemy of imagination. Doubt is the enemy of imagination. In James chapter number 1, verse 5 to 7, we read, If any of you lack wisdom, this is the scripture we read this morning, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Look, doubt is the enemy of imagination. When you were a kid, you had a great imagination. But the older you get, the more your imagination grows rusty. You stop imagining what things could be. And you just start living the way they are. You are stuck in the status quo, which is, which is a Latin for the mess that we are in. Doubts and fear neutralize what God wants to do in our lives. It takes courage to imagine. Do you know why most people don't imagine? Because they are afraid of failure. They let fear dominate their life. Courage is when you do the right thing while you are still afraid. Sometimes it's doing the thing you fear the most. You may wonder, should I wait until all my doubts are gone? Then you have to move against your fear. You have to ignore all the, the insecurity you are feeling and just go for it. That's what James 1, 5 to 7 tells us. Our imagination is either going to be governed by fear or, by, or it's going to be governed by faith. That's 
our thoughts. A will that our imagination be gotten by fear, then we are going to go around being uh, freaked out, stressed out, and worried all the time. When you allow fear to control your imagination, you live a miserable life. Instead, let's decide that we are not going to allow fear to, de to de uh, dominate us. Let's trust in God. Then we can move forward in faith and allow it, our imagination to be filled with all kinds of possibilities because all things are possible with God. You see? Now, we saw that uh, faith requires imagination. We saw that doubt is the enemy of imagination, but we also need to realize that God can do far more than you can imagine. God can do far more than we can imagine. So in other words, we already, I'm already encouraging you to imagine what is going to that can happen. But then God can do even far more than that. You see, the majority of our dreams or imagination tend to reflect concern about daily life, money, school, work, family, friends, job, passion, and health. These are just a few of the most common things that people dream about. God's dream for your life is bigger than any dream you can come up with. It is bigger than your dream, bigger than your imagination. Why? Because it's eternally significant. There are a lot of dreams you could have that may seem big, but they wouldn't be significant. You could dream to be being a millionaire by a certain age. But what's the purpose? Do you think God put you on this planet to live for yourself? Of course not. That's why Ephesians 3.20 tells us God can do anything you know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dream. Look, think of the biggest dream for your life that you have ever come up with. Even if you didn't follow through on it, what's the most out there vision you have had that seemed almost impossible? Well, guess what? God's dream for you is even bigger. It's far more than you could ever imagine. Far more. That's what Ephesians 3.20 tells us. Dream your biggest dream. Think of your greatest vision. God can of that. You have no idea what God wants to do through you. You are living such a small fraction of what you are capable of. You are doing with your life such a small portion of what God wants to do in our lives. God wants you to dream big. He wants you to base your dream not on what you think you can do, but on what you think God can do through you. He wants you to use the imagination that he gave you because dreaming big honors him. It shows faith. It shows trust. And he, it shows that you believe what God can do. I have read a story of a church that many years ago purchased 120 acres of land. That's the biggest than, that is bigger than Disneyland. When word goes out, people said, what kind of church is this that's going to go buy 100 to 120 acres of property? Who do those people think they are? 
when the pastor of that church heard that, he said, that's the wrong question to ask. The question they should ask is, who do they think God is? They were dreaming big because they knew God had a big plan for them. He's got big plans for you too. Let the size of your God determine the size of your dream and imagination. We must believe it to see it. We must believe it to see it. How do you know if you are living your, your dream or God's dream? You may think you were created to get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed, to make a little money, retire, and die. Do you think that all God puts us here for? Our dream is truly from God. It will somehow be connected to his plan for the world. Why would God give us a self-centered dream unconnected to what we want to do in the world, what he wants to do in the world? He wants to use us for his dream. He wants to use us for his plan. God is building a family. He is collecting family members from every nation, every tribe, every language, and people. And when and everybody in the family that he knows will be in the family, we are going into eternity. That's God's big plan. Right before Jesus went back to heaven after the resurrection, he gave the disciples a great dream. It's called the Great Commission. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, it says, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, go and be disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of it, I am with you always even to the end of the age. The Great Commission is our commission. We've had 2,000 years of God, God building his family so far that there are 2.5 billion people in it. The church is almost as big as China and India combined. It's bigger than anything else on this planet because God created it. It's the whole purpose of his life. When God gives you a dream for your life, it is somehow going to be connected to his primary plan. It's connected to the growth of his kingdom and his family until the day is completed and we all go to heaven. Mark chapter 8 and verse 35 tells us if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for God's sake and for the sake of the gospel, the good news, you will save it. We weren't we, we were put here on earth to live for ourselves. Let's ask God to give up his dream for our life so that we can be part of the biggest, best, and most important story of history. Remember, to believe it, to see it. Father, we thank you for your word so clear. To tell us that by faith we will live because we can't see it, but yet we believe it, and you will show it to us. You will give it to us. 
Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are going to do. And we love you, Lord God. Be with us this week as we go forward, as we look to you, and that you, oh Father, will just be here with us and then allow us to exercise our faith in you, knowing that without faith is impossible to serve you, to obey you. To do the things that you require of us, to be able to see what you have in store for us. And you are Father, and we love and Jesus Christ and we pray. Amen and amen. How we would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's sermon. We invite you to join us again next Sunday at the same time. If you would like to attend our Sunday worship service, at 11 a.m. on Zoom, please contact us at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com and we will send you your Zoom invite. We also would love the opportunity to share Christ with you and to help you grow in His Word. Contact us all because of grace um, and, and at gmail.com and let us know how we can pray for you. Visit all our contact information. Please feel free to contact us on any one of them as we empower to grow in grace of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord guide you as we go through this week. See you again next time.